directions are long, you only need to be half a metre wrong and you can easily you know, hit something very hard and have a big, big problem. You go over some really horrendously rough parts, so you just sort of hold your breath. This is a rally where you start and you never know what's going to happen. The world's greatest drivers have got to get through 1,500 miles of this stuff, cope with high altitude and the kind of terrain that, frankly, you'd struggle to walk on, let alone drive a car. Not for nothing, it's the Safari Rally known as the world's greatest, and this year it celebrates its golden jubilee. The Safari is the ultimate test for both man and machine, a mixture of speed and endurance. It's been going for 50 years and all began back in 1953 to celebrate the Queen's coronation. Over the next three days, we'll see long, fast, open roads, as well as the rocky, car-breaking terrain that the drivers fear most. Add to that the fact that most of the stages are open to the public, not to mention the amazing African wildlife. To avoid them both, something unique to the safari, a personal spotter chopper to warn the drivers by radio of the dangers ahead. The Brits have been successful here, both Richard Burns and Colin McRae have won twice. McRae's season got a much needed kickstart with his win yes, last month in Greece, and he's really hoping to keep the momentum going. This is a, a sort of great opportunity for us to do that. You know, all the rumours are and the testing, everybody's been having problems and we've had a good test, so we've got to try and capitalise on that when we can. No such high expectations for the championship leader, Marcus Gronholm. He's never made it to the finish of this event. This year they say it's even rougher and tougher, so expect some drama. And this is how the championship standings look going into the weekend. Gronholm with a 14-point lead over Carlos Sainz, McRae and Burns expecting to pass the tarmac expert Gilles Panizzi. Last year's safari winner Tommy Mackinnon just outside the 1-6, to six, a point behind Petter Solberg. And welcome to Rally Headquarters, and I've got Jeremy Hart here. Let's talk to him about just how tough it is. Is it really that bad out there? Well, Sheka Mehta, who's won here five times, says it's going to be carnage. Is it a case, then, of whoever's still driving on Sunday is the winner? Well, it's a case of who dares wins. It's, it is a dilemma for the drivers, because if they go too fast, they might break the car. If they go too slow, they'll lose. OK, let's talk a bit more about this, because Robbie Head, who's not here with us at the moment, has been out and driven every single mile of this rally, and this is the kind of road that he found. <coughs> It's quite monstrous, isn't it? I mean, the holes there are the size of your average bathtub and the rocks are mammoth. He's had a lot of punctures and he broke a drive shaft. How about this? This is the toughest piece of road you're ever going to see in your life. Me, personally, I've never seen anything like it. Unbelievable. A real car breaker. Well, look, if he says it's tough, it is. But what does our championship leader, Marcus Gronholm, make of this place? He hates it. He's been here twice and he can't wait till Sunday night till it's all over. Maybe he'll go home sooner, of course. So good news for the two British drivers. Are you tipping either Richard or Colin for this? I don't think Richard will win. I don't think the car's got what it takes here, to be honest, his Peugeot. But I think Colin will win. He's won here before twice and he's got a very strong forward focus. Watch then as we home in on the exact location of our African adventure. From headquarters just outside Nairobi, west to the four stages on day one. And the crews must survive 210 miles today, almost as much as they'd cover in an entire rally elsewhere in the championship. Stage one, just over 45 miles long, billed as an hors d'oeuvre on this rally menu of monster portions. Up, two, three, four, limbering up for battle, championship leader Marcus Grunholm. Nice. Grunholm's first into the lion's den. This stage might be a tiddler in safari terms, but the rocks and the ruts are massive. Nine minutes after starting and just ten miles into the rally, Grunholm's Peugeot full silent. He has no option but to pull over, call for help on the radio and pray that he won't be out of Africa in record time. 
Eh, fix, eh, fix, eh, fix for Timo. Uh, the engine stopped. The engine stopped suddenly. And no warning, no warning. Next up, Carlos Sainz, winner here a decade ago when men were men and the safari was a week long. Down on the stage with Robbie is Penny Mallory. So we were expecting Marcus to come through because he's first on the road, but something's happened to Marcus because the first car through is Carlos Sainz picking his way through. It's much, much slower than I expected it to be. I mean, it's really rough here, Penny. You can see them first, first gear. Look at the car just bumping over these rocks. Unbelievable. Back down the stage, even with his engineers at hand, Grunholm's rally is over. The engine seized. Right at the end of the stage, Sykes gets a puncture. Can only set fifth fastest time. In the headlines, dropping to 34th is Gilles Panizzi with a broken suspension. Petter Solberg down to 19th with a broken clutch. And not just down, but out of the rally, Freddy Leutz. Clutch trouble terminal for the Belgian, who came close to dying here a few years ago. This is the Rift Valley, the cradle of civilization. But the uncivilized days of Colin McRae opening the door of his car during a stage here to have a pee have long gone. He's cautious today, and that caution costs him 90 seconds. He's now seventh. Richard Burns, too, decides to take it easy on this Kenyan curtain raiser. He's the current world champion, Richard Burns. Taking it very easy. Again, Penny, he's just picking his way through. You know, he's just taking it easy in the car. They've got a long way to go in this rally. He's just threading it through. Look at the suspension. They're taking a complete battering. Burns' slow speed is down to one thing. He never came to this rally believing he could win. So just getting through, just getting to the finish is his aim. It's Tommy Mackin and it looks as if he's really pushing hard over this rough stuff. Much faster than anybody else. Slipping the clutch there. So, as Robbie said, no such tippy-toe nonsense for Tommy Mackinnon. The Finn's not won since January, and he needs some speed to reawaken his title hopes. Mackinnon's against Carlos Sainz's time, but Mackinnon's fastest, and by a gap big enough to squeeze through a whole family of giraffe. Last night, Colin McRae's co-driver Nicky Grist gave Safari new boy Marco Martin some words of calm to ease his nerves. And now Martin's taken that advice and rubbed it in their faces. Colin and Nicky are down in seventh, but Martin rocks up the Kenyan charts to third. No more advice for you, Marco. But beating all three Fords is another Safari newcomer, Thomas Radstrom in a Citroen. He might look like Harry Potter, but Radstrom flies faster than the Golden Snitch. Kenneth Eriksson said before the rally that he could win here, and the Skoda driver's not joking. This is Kenneth Eriksson in the Skoda. You cannot discount Skodas. They came third last yeah, year. Yeah, lots of experience here, and Kenneth's, you know, a super driver, especially on these rough events. Picking a good line. So this is the lie of the land, with the supposedly easy one of the day gone. Four Scandinavians, then Carlos Sainz. But where are the Brits? This rally has plenty of history, but also has an uncertain future. And one man who knows more about it than anybody else is Shekhar Mehta, who first won here in 1973, and then every year between 1979 and 82. He's now the president of the FIA's Rallies Commission. Shekhar, there's no event like the Safari, and it's still in the World Championship, even though some people say it maybe shouldn't be. I think there's a lot of people who say it shouldn't be because it is the most expensive round. It is, uh, uh, you do require to do a lot of testing development, which you don't for the other rallies. You need large fuel tanks, for example. You need higher ground clearance. All these things need testing, therefore a lot more money. From the driver's point of view, of course, there are not too many drivers who are used to this kind of terrain as well. But arguably, though, you get the most character out of any event. Well, if you're selling a world championship to the world, I think you've got to have an event like this, which really is you battle the elements. In the old days, you had very, very rough patches, rougher than we had this year, but followed by smooth sections, and it was all in one section. Um, 
So mentally you could say, all right, I'm going to pussyfoot for about 5k and I know it ends. Whereas here it says it just never ends, it's so rough. I know you're meant to be impartial, but who is going to win this weekend? I think it's um, probably going to be a Ford. They're the strongest. And that matters? It's the only thing that matters. Well, we can see a lot of cars drop out there. I think we're going to see carnage. Well, if you thought your drive to work this morning was hellish, look what happened to Yuha Kankanen on the roads in Kenya. It blew the front out of his high Hyundai. And all over this service park, there are stories of woe and with drivers with their heads in their hands. Tell us exactly what happened and why you're out of the rally. Yeah, we were quite quickly out after 17 case. Suddenly the engine stopped like we, somebody took the main switch off. We don't know exactly what happened, but something in, in the engine. Peter, your mechanics have done an amazing job. They changed the gearbox in 11 minutes. Yeah, it's very good. It's very good. But uh, still, we, we lost uh, the rally again on the first stage. So it's uh, the fourth rally now on the row, and uh, it's a little bit uh, boring to start uh, okay. the rest of the rally after the first stage had been so bad. The championship leader, Marcus Grunholm, is out. Does that take the pressure off you a little bit or give you more of an incentive to close the gap in the championship? I mean, we've got the incentive anyway, obviously. Yeah, it's good for us at the moment that Marcus is out, but we've still got to finish this rally. Richard, how tough was that first stage? OK, we got, we got through with no trouble at all, so of course it doesn't, doesn't sound too tough. But uh, OK, we didn't, we didn't do a very good time, but at least we're here in, uh, in one piece. Are you very confident now of winning this? Yeah, I'm very confident if everything works like, like it seems to be at the moment. It should be good. One man who won't be winning is Armin Schwartz. He retires on the road section before stage two when his alternator gives up the ghost. Here we are, 20 miles into stage two. Look at how rough it is here to the left. I've just borrowed somebody's local transport. The drivers are going to have a big, tough problem to get through this. And they're faced with two options up ahead. Go to the left, which is a smooth line or carry on to the right, up that rough section. So the first car through stage two is Carlos Sainz, because Marcus Granholm is out of the rally. He's a minute and 20 off the lead, and it'll be really interesting to see what line he takes here. Is he he's slowing down, is he going to go left? Yep. Yes, he is. It's a smoother route. <laughs> Science's eighth fastest on the stage, consistent driving once again from the Spaniard, and it leaves him fourth overall. Left tightens to five. Nicky Gris tells Colin McRae how fast to take this corner. Then they realise they could have gone quicker. Faster. Okay. Oh, do you want to make that? Five plus. Okay. He changes five to five plus. But what do they do here? They've marked down a cheeky cut in their notes for this one, but will this save them any time? 30, six crest, and six right. Into six the actual stage is that bit of road to their right. Six right, and here turn two right and left over bump on the grass. Oh look, he's gone right across the road. He's just missed out the entire section. We better be careful where we stand. That's an amazing line. Totally different. I thought this might happen, but I didn't think he was going to go there. So he's gone, and this is allowed. This is not a problem. No. Brilliant light. How much time do you think that would have saved? Maybe five seconds, but you know, smooth line. And I mean, he went nowhere near the road. He must have made that plan what on the recce. Yeah, he's obviously checked it out on the recce and decided to keep to the smooth option. <laughs> Tommy Mackinnon isn't looking very smooth, but then he wants to build on his lead over Thomas Radstrom. So he's decided the car has just got to take the abuse. Here's Tommy Mackinnon, leader of the rally. Interesting to see what his line's going to be. He's keeping, he's just changed line there. Oh, he's going straight he's going on. on. He's going for the run. <laughs> But Mackinnon's gamble doesn't pay off. McRae takes the stage win 27.9 seconds faster than the rally leader. Kenneth Erickson and Tina Torner are taking every lump and bump that they find. 
He's seventh fastest on stage two and overtakes Marco Martin to go third overall. But watch out for the front left wheel of Thomas Radstrom Citroen. It's loosening. And by the time he reaches service, it's ripped off altogether and taken the suspension with it. His service crew leap into the back to help him out. It looks a complete wreck as it plows through the dust and the rocks. But Citroen will do him proud and he'll make it to stage three. And the stage is Il Damat. Not particularly long, but this is the stage that all the drivers have been dreading all morning. Carlos Sainz is up the pace a bit and looks in complete control. Ford have their drivers try and break the cars in testing, but they couldn't. But a test and a rally are very different. And almost halfway through, the rocks rip into a tyre and Sainz has to stop and change the wheel. But there's worse to come. Four miles from safety, he blows a damper. Sainz has lost tons of time. Uh, we stopped to change a puncher and I broke a uh, shock absorber. Do you know how much time you may have lost? About two minutes and a half, something like that. I don't know. But Sainz is saved by even bigger problems for Kenneth Ericsson. His suspension breaks and he loses third place to Sainz. Not only does Sainz break a rear damper, so too does Colin McRae. But in the scheme of things, it's nothing. This road would destroy any family car. It would even test a Land Rover. In fact, a tank would be the best vehicle for the job. McRae finishes the stage fourth fastest and hangs on to second overall. How much time do you think you've lost in there with everything? Uh, we didn't lose any time, we had a good clean run, so we'll see what the time's like, see what times are like. At the start of the rally, Prince Edward apparently asked Richard Burns if he'd done this rally before. Oops, King Richard has won it twice, Your Highness, and promptly told him so. Burns. Very apt. The world champ has to stop and put out a blaze in his suspension. No such troubles for Tommy Mackinnon. This is a command performance. But even Mackinnon scoops up some of the dust that litters these roads. Inside the car, it's like a London fog. Mackinnon's charging like a rhino across these plains, but Burns is slowing up ahead, and Mackinnon slows in his dust. Three miles, he sits blinded before the gent from Oxford pulls over. The move keeps Mackinnon in the lead. Other headlines, despite front damper failure, Gilles Panizzi, the tarmac expert, is still second fastest. Loeb too breaks his suspension, but also injures his back. It's so bad that his co-driver, Daniel Elena, has to drive for a while. It's been a year since Mitsubishi's last win. Never in the frame this year, Francois Delacour retires with engine failure. But there is something to cheer about in the red corner. Alistair McRae, first time in Africa, has his Mitsubishi ramped up and rocketing along. McRae versus Mother Nature, and despite a broken windscreen, damper trouble, and a soft brake, the Scot seems to be winning. He not only beats Mother Nature, he beats his brother, and that's no mean feat. Alistair, this is your first safari rally. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, no, it's good. It was very good in there. Uh, still difficult to know how hard to push, though. It's very rough. You know, I think you're the only car that's come through, one of the only cars that's come through without a problem. I don't mind that at all. <laughs> So at the end of the killer stage, Mackinnon's two and a half minutes up from the two Fords. Then it's Ericsson, Rovenpera and Martin. 60 or so miles now, onto Lely, the last stage of the day. Thank heaven, shout some of the drivers. But the pain goes on. Out goes Petter Solberg with turbo failure. Out goes Tony Gardemeister. Three wheels not enough to keep his Skoda wagon rolling. Pain two for Alistair McRae. A broken wheel costs him big time. He drops to 14th overall. Back to the sharp end. Carlos Sainz is keeping his nose clean, which isn't easy when the floor of the Rift Valley is coated in red dust. A broken windscreen, the only damage to the Spaniards' Ford. But Sainz needs to get more fired up if he wants to move into the lead. He's third on this stage. Colin McRae says to hell with it and decides to play Tommy Mackinnon at his own game. He floors the accelerator and charges across Africa like one of the local Matatu minibuses. 
This is Colin's wake-up call. He knows that Mackinnon must be beaten, not by the elements, but by fellow man if this rally is not to go to the Finn on Sunday. McRae is half a minute faster than anyone else, but how much faster is he than Mackinnon? Mackinnon plays right into McRae's hands, for some strange reason, deciding to pace himself. Mind you, even at this speed, he'd get arrested on the motorway for driving at almost twice the speed limit. Tommy's decision to drive with his head and not his heart costs him over two minutes, and now, also, most of his lead. So the rally cars are just arriving into the last service of the first day of the Safari Rally. A few cars haven't survived it, but let's go and talk to the ones that have. Is it hard to find that balance between pushing hard and saving the car? Uh, not at all. It was, uh, it was no question at all in the morning when we made good times. Uh, everything worked well and uh, it was not too hard. Even sometimes it can be even more dangerous if you, if you slow down a little bit more. Really, I think the biggest problem is I've been very, very cautious with my pace notes and uh, I wasn't sure of the capability of the car and, and how well it would go over the bumps and, the, and through the dips and things. So I've just been, I've been basically too slow through those pieces. And here's how our leaderboard looks after four stages of day one. And after 210 stage miles, just over 16 seconds separates Colin McRae from our leader, Tommy Mackinnon. Now, there's a long gap to Carlos Sainz, but the question is, where is Richard Burns? And the answer is almost 13 minutes behind Sainz in eighth. Now, you can lose a lot of time on the safari, but can Richard Burns make up all that much time tomorrow? We'll find out. Back at rally headquarters, Colin McRae. Colin, how are you feeling tonight? I would imagine bruised after all of that today. Yeah, not too bad. We've had quite a good day. Uh, managed to avoid all the big bumps, so feeling quite good tonight. Tell us about that brilliant move on stage two when you turned the car into a lawnmower, didn't you? Yeah, well, the grass was needing cut, wasn't it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's obviously very, very fast across the field, and, and the road to the right of the car, where we probably should be, is very rough. So it gives the dampers a bit of a rest for, you know, probably sort of 30 seconds. Did it save, save your time? Well, I don't really know, but I'm sure you guys will tell me the truth here. Yeah. But uh, it, it certainly made it a bit easier for the car. Well, let's have a look at Virtual Spectator and see whether you did. And here you are side by side with cars. car, Santa. You, know, you obviously lose a bit when you get onto the grass, but then, you know, it's flat out up there. It's over 100 miles an hour across the grass, so we're gaining quite a bit on them here. But then I've got to slow down a bit at the top to come back onto the road, so... Uh, we'll see what happens. It was deliberate, it was in the notes and you wanted to do this? Yeah, no, we, we wrecked it that way. We wrecked the, the main road and then we went back and wrecked the, the grass at the side. Yeah, let's see what happens towards the end, Colin. Not so good at the end. So do you do it again on Sunday when that stage is repeated? Probably will, yeah, because we've got the notes for that and I'm quite confident I know where I'm going on the, the left-hand side on the grass. To go back onto the main road would be just a wee bit risky. And a quick thought about tomorrow, is the car going to survive? What's the plan? Yeah, it feels good. You know, we've had no problems. We had one small suspension problem earlier today. Uh, apart from that, it's been very good. OK. Colin, best of luck. Thank you. So Colin McRae out to catch Tommy Mackinnon. Join us after the break for all the action from day two of the Safari Rally. And welcome to Rally Headquarters, where to make a little more sense of this rally is Robbie Head. And Robbie, this rally is beautifully set up for Colin McRae and for Tommy Mackinnon now, but it's still a shock not to see Marcus Granholm in the lead. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of Marcus's shortest rallies. It lasted eight minutes. Three times he started this rally, and three times he's never finished it. So are we saying these Peugeot cars are fragile here in Kenya? Because Richard Burns isn't enjoying himself either, is he? I think Marcus was unlucky, but the Peugeots are off the pace here. But they've got that massive rear wing, and that stops the top speed of the car. So they're suffering in performance. Now, in the championship, Marcus Gronholm can't be caught because he's got a big enough lead. But here, this is a big opportunity for Colin McRae, who loves to improvise when he knows he's got a chance. And here he is on stage two, the lawnmower man. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for Colin or Carlos or any of the other championship regulars to close that gap to Marcus. And this is an inspired piece of driving. Colin cut completely off the road onto a smoother line, which allowed his dampers, his shock absorbers, to cool down 
and then the second half of the stage, which was rougher, he set the fastest time. So is his car strong enough to go the distance here? Yeah, I mean, Ford have had a good test, they've got a good product here, and I think they're confident. OK, Robbie, thank you. A little bit more from you later on. But for the time being, let's have a look at where the drivers will go on day two. Further than on day one. 280 competitive miles to survive this time, five stages in all, and they're going to see a lot of stage five. It'll be run twice, so there's going to be no let-up. Whatever reserves of stamina the drivers had left from yesterday will be drained dry today. There are more helicopters on the Safari Rally than World Rally cars, because each car needs a spotter chopper to fly ahead of it on the road to warn the car of any possible dangers on the road, but not to be outdone on the helicopter front Channel 4 have our own helicopter and our own pilot, Renee. We're going to go off to stage 5 now, where Robbie is on the start line waiting for the cars to arrive. Mickey, what happened there? No, just pulling around Carlos and just dropped off the edge of the road and he just bellied out on the sump guard. Took all these thorn bushes out of the way, he just drove into the ditch a bit more and popped out through. No problem. Minor drama. What's the plan for today? Just uh, we'll, we'll push as quickly as we can in the first one and see what Tommy does. I think his, Tommy's attitude is all or nothing here, so if, if that's the case, we can let him go and we'll just sort of try and survive and see what happens to him. He's got a bit of an advantage and he's running clean air all, all day today. Yeah, but I mean, hopefully, if, you know, the speed he was going at yesterday, we're not going to really close the gap at all, so unless he has a problem, and if he has a problem, it's all the better for us. Pressure now on Tommy Mackin and a two-minute lead yesterday, last night, dropped to just 16 seconds. But on the way to the stage start this morning, Mackin knows his car is far from fit. He complains that the rear dampers are not working properly. He's now got to survive almost 40 minutes on one of the roughest roads in Kenya. Sure enough, Mackinnon is way off the pace, and look carefully at the rear wheel. It's jiggling up and down, making the car shake and rattle. By midpoint on the stage, Mackinnon knows he must have lost the lead, but only time will tell. On board with Scottish speed demon Colin McRae. Up ahead, his spotter chopper. But the eye in the sky doesn't see three birds sat in the path of the Ford Focus. That's six, right? Just feet from the bumper, the birds fly up and splat. One smacks into the windscreen. 15. Six crest, 15. Up ahead, Mackinnon is slowing to a trot. Any faster, and the road will shake man and machine to smithereens. But Mackinnon's problem is now McRae's problem. So slow is Tommy driving that McRae is now heading almost blind into Mackinnon's dust cloud. The teams have a gentleman's agreement to pull over, but McRae wonders if Subaru have told Tommy to give way. The message from Subaru management is when you are within 200 metres, uh, Tommy will pull over and let you pass. Does he know we're right behind him? Yeah, we've told him. We're in, telling him again. In the sixth left, 70. Kedja. There he is, there's Tommy Mackinnon up ahead. McCree is so close he could give the Finn a shove. Six left over. Hell is violent to get through over now. Six left over, jump me. We are doing Fast bump and six crest. Either Tommy doesn't know Collins there or he's refusing to move over. Hey, get the drill over. Steady now. Finally, Tommy sees Colin and dives to the right. But the heat inside the cars is as high as the heat outside. Not just McRae, but Mackinnon is at boiling point, shouting at his chopper spotter. We 
We're about 40 miles into the start of stage five and waiting for Tommy Mackinnon to come through, who's the first car on the road. But we've just heard on the radio that Colin McRae has passed Tommy on the stage, but we're not quite sure what the problem is. Well, it's good news for Colin because it means he's already taken three minutes from Tommy, so that's going to put him in the lead of the rally. So let's wait and see how he comes through this section. Here comes Colin right now. There's lots of bumps and jumps along this section, but you can see they're in fifth gear. It'll be really interesting to see how far he backs off through there. Good action. Mackinnon's causing havoc all over the stage. Next into his wake is Carlos Sykes. Watch the stones ricochet off his wheels. heard information that Tommy's got damper problems and you can see he's physically a lot slower than Colin through this section he's just crawling through look at the back end of the car it's, really, it's like hopping yeah it's bumping badly at the he's back. got no rear dampers he's hit something hard on the stage and now he's just got it got to get it to the end look at the car it's a mess sites his co-driver Lewis Moyer is also worried about Mackinnon's etiquette we cannot see David we cannot see Catching Tommy now, which is bad news for Carlos because look, he can't, he can't see the road because of the dust. Tommy is stopping on the left. You have clear running 200 meters. Thank you. Rápido, ojo por izquierda, cartel. But this time, Subaru seemed to be on the ball. Tommy gives way to the Spaniard. Sykes is in the clear, but who's lost the least time to the Finnish mobile chicane? It's Sykes versus McRae. Sykes does it, he beats McRae's tie by half a minute. That's how much Mackinnon cost the Scot. More dust, but not so bad for Harry Robin Perra. Maybe Finns have dust radar. He escapes the Subaru fog to set third fastest time, thanks to some shortcutting. That's a different line. Completely. He's going. Well, he's this well is Harry Robin Perra, and he's not taking the conventional line. He's on the other road on the other side. He's obviously wrecked it and felt that that's a lot smoother. Or he saw the programme yesterday and saw what Colin did. That's where Marcus Grunholm retired yesterday on stage one. Amazing. <laughs> is he just cutting through the grass? No, there is a road over there. Kenneth Erickson and Tina Turner on song. Tina's finished third on the awesome Paris Dakar, and at this rate, she and Kenneth will do the same in Kenya. Vänster 5, break 50, rough, clean, OK, hold vänster. So break 50, rough, OK, clean, hold vänster. 40, höger 50, lyft, fart 160. 100. Ö, litet krön 100. Höger 5, 50, håll höger 180. Lyft nästan full. 180. Så lyft nästan full kommer här då. 180. Vänster 50, krön. Varning, break 50. Gupp, fart 100. Varning, gupp, fart 100. 130. Håll höger, okej, okay, 60. Varning, håll vänster till lyft. Så varning, håll vänster här till lyft. Till krön 50. Höger 5 plus 250. Lyft, okej, okay, 550. Hold the gas, sir, and 
där börsen nu. Okej. Okay. Det är lite grann projekt dubbelvarning kommer det. Det är så höger med gubb. Dubbelvarning i gräs och gubb. 30 clean, vänster 5 lång. 80. Vänster 5 clean i 100. Vänster 5 kort, break 5 i varning. Gubb i höger 5 rapp. Så här nu, vänster 5 kort, break. 50, gupp, kommer det i höger fem rapp. 20 håller höger absolut, förlåt. Höger absolut, 40 rapp, okej. Okay. 100. Gupp, okej. Okay. 150. Gupp, okej, okay. 150. Vänster fyra plus halv lång. Vänster fyra plus halv lång. They're chasing sights for fastest time on this stage. But they miss it. But overall, right now, they're fourth. Eighth overnight, Richard Burns ups the pace a bit for day two. Peugeot have put on some new dampers, and he's now hopeful of some of Robin Perra's speed. 150. Left max to Stones, four plus. 20 left max over Crest Stones, four. It's not the boot that's open, the rear window's just blown out, taking with it the rear wing on his 206, but it doesn't seem to hinder the Englishman. He's sixth fastest on this, the highest stage in world rallying. 40 over grass. Then keep left on bump, hey right, to beat your leg. Go 60, bumpy to meet your left break, to beat your right plus and bumps two plus. Left to meet your right, big cut. 40 meet your left cut to fast right to minus. 40 bumpy to meet your right. 20 left to cut straight. 20 meet your left to K right to plus and store now. 50 K right plus and keep left the bump. Go 70 over grass to flat right onto road and meet your left long to meet your left plus. To easy right box, go there, the key left plus long. To fast right, 20. Cut flat right and straight over 60 to flat left. There, the easy right plus don't cut. And flat left, 80. Slight right, 20. Flat left, 80. Breaking turn, medium left. And key right, don't cut. There, the fast left, straight 60. Key left plus tight. Healthy, fast, right, plus, in long, 60, slight legs OK to grass OK, 40 bump 5 to straight grass OK, 70 dip 5, straight 80 jump 3 plus, 40 keep right on flat legs. Alistair McRae's got the Africa habit fast, a third fastest time yesterday and again on the pace today. Okay. Oh, for the but all this excitement gets to Al's bladder. He's bursting so okay? badly he forgets to put on the handbrake as he goes in search of yeah, a bush clean. or even a flame tree. Roger, we're leaving you now. The first stage on only the second day of safari action for former gymnast Sebastian Loeb. Third on stage two. What today? <laughs> He's taking the same line as Harry Rovenpera, which is about 50 metres from where the other guys have been going. There's another road over there, where the helicopters obviously tell them what's coming in front, but it looks quite slow through there. Loeb wins the stage with that shortcut, just like Harry Rovenpera's. With Virtual Spectator, they explain how and why they did it. So, Ricky, we have two solutions at this point, and we decided to try the two solutions, and for me it was the best one was at the left. About uh, 57 kilometers, and there is uh, two choice, and we make the notes in the right side. But today morning, when we when coming into this place, and uh, we change the minor. Because at the left, you have to be very slow at the beginning, because it's uh, very rough. 
And, uh, but after that, uh, it's uh, it's fast, and uh, on the other side, you have uh, a lot of jumps and uh, s s uh, slow corner. And I prefer to go on the left. So of course, that this big risk, and uh, in safari, is uh, maybe not best thing doing. But uh, sometimes you need to take the risk because you take the risk all the time in this rally. Pay attention, this is how things look now. McRae is the new leader from Sites and Robin Perra. Mackinnon loses so much time, he's now sixth. But at this rate, there's still hope for those just out of the top six, like Radstrom, Burns and Loeb. The service area at Suswa. Tommy Mackinnon has lost nine minutes on today's first stage. Colin McRae, the new leader. Jeremy Hart is with him. Colin, did you see what happened to Tommy? I don't know what happened to him, but you know, Tommy and the Subaru team weren't very sporting at all yeah. We followed them in the dust for a long time, and then I was right on his bumper, and I almost had to put, force my way past, they just wouldn't pull over. That's outrageous. What was going through your mind? Well, I mean, we got, it got to the point where I thought I was going to have to push him out of the way. I mean, we were right on his tail, and I was just getting all the rocks in the radiator and on the screen. So, I, mean, I don't know what he was doing. It's not the type of rally you do things like that. How close did you get to him? I was right off, I was about two metres off him, you'll see it on the in-car and he wouldn't move over. Tommy, you started this morning leader, now you've lost that, what happened? I don't know what happened, something strange from the service straight away on main road. Uh, I felt straight away something wrong with the rear dampers and uh, just get all, all came out from both of them, there was something wrong straight away and uh, we did whole section without ramp dampers. Colin McRae is furious with you, he's very cross, he said you wouldn't pull over, he said you, he was six feet behind you and he couldn't get past, why didn't you let him by? Yeah, I was just going to say sorry because I had no, some, in some reason, I had no information from our helicopter, I did, couldn't nobody say anything about, I don't know what was the problem with our, our radio, something, something wrong, we have to go to find out, so sorry, sorry for that, but I had no... Really, I had no information about that. There was a big discussion between our team and Subaru, um, but it seems that you speak to three people, you get three different stories, so I think there's a lot of bull flying around. I'm very sorry, that, And it was also a very dangerous place. Of course, I could pull out straight away. It was no, not my target to try to keep you behind. Sorry, that. It was really, no it was really, they have uh, something wrong with uh, our radio. I'm sorry, very sorry about that. Okay. So, a happy ending, well in front of the cameras anyway. Repairs now needed to Colin McRae's windscreen after that bird hit it. Richard Burns as well has got battle scars. He needs a whole new rear screen after that last stage. And Tommy Mackinnon relieved just to get his hands on a new set of dampers. They are one of the most important components on his car on these Kenyan roads. Up next, it's stage six, but it's covered in low cloud, which throws the whole stage into doubt. For safety reasons now, the helicopters are grounded, and the outcome is inevitable. It's been instructed that stage six is cancelled. Stage six cancelled, over. I've just landed at the start of stage six, and there's two comedians here that are waiting to turn their cars around and uh, go back to service because the stage has been cancelled due to all the, the low cloud over the mountains where the spotter choppers can't fly. Colin, you're now leading by two minutes. Yeah, I can't say I'm really that sorry to have this one cancelled. It's, it's one of the roughest ones, so it's a bit of a relief. Colin McRae pleased to get a breather because of that cancelled stage, but what of his brother Alistair? Lying 13th overall in his Mitsubishi, this is him on the road section back to service. Right, I'm in mission control at Mitsubishi here. Out on the road is Alistair McRae. Now, s the second stage of the day has been cancelled, so he's going to be heading back into service. Let's get a quick word with Alistair. Hi, Alistair, it's Jeremy Hart here from Channel 4. You obviously did brilliantly yesterday. How good was the first stage today? Yeah, no, the, the first stage was good. Uh, we're just really trying to find a pace that's hopefully not going to break the car uh, and wait for other people to have problems. I've cancelled the second stage of the day. How much of a disappointment is that? And uh, have you got to now push harder? You know, it's quite disappointing. We had a, a good stage time in there yesterday going the opposite direction. It's very rough and the car was working well. So it is a bit disappointing because uh, maybe, you know, some other people could have had problems in there. Robbie Alistair needs all the miles that he can get on this rally. Is it right that they cancel the stage just because the helicopters can't fly? 
Well, John, the team and drivers have made a, a pact that unless the safety helicopter sweeps the road in front of them, it won't run. It, it really is a crucial factor to the safety of the rally. Remember, these roads are open. They manage without them on other rallies, though. Yeah, but the roads aren't open. You know, they're closed, so, you know, potentially you can meet cars coming the other way, so right. important. Tell us about the shenanigans between Tommy Mackinnon and Colin McRae. What was going on there? That was finished gamesmanship, that was, wasn't it? Well, it's interesting because, you know, Colin, Tommy must have known that Colin was coming behind him because obviously it would be a damper problem. So, you know, he's just waiting on him. Now, the helicopter above could have radioed Tommy to tell him, look, Colin's here, but they said the radio was broken. You believe them? I'm not convinced. I'd like to know the real story. Could it have been a bit of, you know, Subaru team orders? Tommy, just stay there, you know, hold Colin up a bit. Why can he not look in his rearview mirror the way the rest of us do back home? It's not quite as easy as mirror signal manoeuvre here. I mean, they're doing, like, you know, 100 miles an hour most of the time, and uh, they're so focused on the road ahead. So he doesn't check behind him at all? No. Nope. Bit careless. <laughs> it's rallying. <laughs> you don't worry about the guys behind. OK, Robbie, thanks for now. Let's find out a little bit more then about what these helicopters offer the drivers here. Penny Mallory has hitched a lift in one of these so-called spotter choppers. And with me is Paul Howe, who's the Subaru team manager. And Paul, can you explain to me, this all seems a bit over the top, all these helicopters. Is it really necessary? Oh, it's, it's fully necessary for safety, primarily for the crew and for uh, local people and uh, animals. Uh, the, the main idea of the spotter is to fly 250 metres in front of the car and ensure that uh, if there's anything in the road, because uh, there could be animals, there could be vehicles, there could be spectators stood in the dust, that he advises the rally car, uh, which he does immediately, and uh, they take caution or react accordingly. I can speak uh, from the equipment here, I can speak to the rally car, I can speak to the service at the same time, so just one press on the button here and I'm speaking to him. He only needs to know certain information, either animals on the left or, you know, a donkey in the road. Donkeys are the worst, they just stand in the middle of the road. <laughs> Imagine a car hitting a donkey, unfortunately at 200 kilometres an hour, it is very dangerous. Donkey in the middle of the road, round the corner. Okay. 70. As well as watching the car and giving instructions, you're obviously navigating the helicopter either via map or via the road book. It's quite a precise art, isn't it? I, it, it there's a lot more to it than anyone would realise. Yeah, yeah, it's as much fun as doing the rally. So the chopper's then an essential part of rallying here in Kenya, and for the next stage they'll be at lower altitude. The clear sky is coming up of stage seven. All the action after the break. This is stage seven, which is one of the smoothest on the rallies. Look at the surface here. It's just smooth with just the cracks from the hot African sun. The cars have got absolutely no problem here in one of the fastest stages of the rally. 48 cars started this rally, and less than half are still in the safari at half distance. At this rate, there'll be none left. But if there's one man left at the finish, you can put your money on it being Colin McRae. So far, he's yet to put a foot wrong, and his Ford has been bullet and Africa-proof. The fans flock out of nearby Nairobi to cheer on the survivors of this African odyssey. The trouble is many Kenyans are not used to the cars doing 120 miles an hour and wander too close to the stage. For rally leader Colin McRae, it's a mix of running the gauntlet and Russian roulette. Despite the pedestrian problems, McRae finishes the stage okay. second fastest. Hold on, everything OK? Yeah, no problem. That is absolutely ludicrous. but they're not happy about the spectators. Dave, these spectators are uh, horrendous. I mean, we're coming flat in sixth gear and they're in the road and they're moving out the way. It's a little bit crazy. It's... So far, Collins escaped with no major tyre problems. Not so his teammate, Carlos Seitz. 
He's already paid a few trips to the toolbox for his jack and wheel brace. And on Entulele, he has two again. Robbie, is Carlos just unlucky or is he hard on his tyres? Well, Jeremy, the full team have opted not to use the Pirelli Moose system on this event. The reason being, these stages are extremely long and the pressure increases within the tyre with that system in it. So that means that if you get a puncture, you've got to stop and change it and you're looking at a time loss of around about two minutes. Sainz loses two and a half minutes to his rubber trouble. It means Rotham Perra now has a chance of taking second spot. But next up is Tommy Mackinnon. He's missing a big wedding back home today, but half-jokingly said he might be home in time to see the bride go up the aisle. But it'll take something more than the puncture he gets on Entulele to get him on a plane home. Tommy pulls over to change the flat. He's got just three minutes to get on the new one, because bearing down on him is Harry Rovenpera. And they're really going to have to work fast because here comes Harry Rovenpera. This is going to be tight. But Tommy and Kai Lindstrom get the old one off and the new one on and rocket back up the Rift Valley just in front of Rovenpera. Look how close it is. You can see Mackinnon's dust trail in the distance. Robbie, this must be the worst possible scenario for a driver. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jeremy. And look at this dust that Harry's got to drive into. You can hear he's off the throttle and immediately looking to find the road, he just can't physically see it. And he's actually off the road at that point, you can see him turning right back on again. Meanwhile, Tommy's changed his puncture and up to full speed again. You know, so there's no way that Harry's going to catch him because of the dust problem. Remember, it's a three minute interval between each car. So Tommy's obviously changed his puncture in approximately two minutes, which means Harry's in his dust cloud. The drivers have a pact that if they have a puncture on the stage and manage to get it changed within the three minute interval and they're going to carry on at full speed, then they won't pull over and let the car behind through. If they had a mechanical problem, they would pull out the way and the dust wouldn't be an issue. Even with pace notes, without vision on these extremely quick stages, it's almost impossible to drive flat out. You can see Harry just scooping some more dust up over the front of the car there, but that isn't caused by Tommy, that was the low front spoiler on his car. Harry Rovampera might have lost some time, but he still takes second place from Carlos Sainz. We've just landed in our helicopter in a field right by a Maasai village. Now, this is completely amazing. I've waited all my life to see something like this. The entire village has come out and uh, they've never seen a helicopter before, so they've been completely amazed. But this is something else they will never have seen before, a digital camera. I'm going to take a picture and just watch what happens when I show them the picture. They've never seen anything like it. It's <laughs> just <laughs> amazing. It's good, eh? <laughs> this is quite incredible. 14th this morning. Now Alistair McRae climbs a massive one place. But this year is all about experience for the Scot in Africa. It's the ultimate driving lesson, all about learning the rocks and the ruts and how to perform an emergency stop at a zebra crossing.
Tommy Mackinnon's not the only double safari winner with little chance of winning now this year. Richard Burns, too, reckons that he's got more chance of climbing Kilimanjaro than winning tomorrow night. As well as the rough sections in Safari Rally, there's also some mega, mega quick places. Look at this straight behind me. Richard Burns, flat out through there. Thanks a lot, Bumsy. <laughs> Burnsy's obviously had enough of pussyfooting along and decides that if there's no pain, there'll be no glory. He attacks stage seven, lifting off only for the roughest bits. 100. Slight left of a jump six, OK. 100. Slight left. 70. Slight right. 100. Slight left. 100. Slight right long, 100, flat left minus tightens, and easy left plus long, 100. Slight right, 100, right max, 120, slight right, 120, long crest, 50 braking, slight right 30, left max in 20, flat right minus. Straight 80, bumpy OK, medium right plus tightens, 60 braking, plus right, 10k left, keep out, 10k left, keep out, 100, slight right, 150 braking, slight crest 40, turn 90 right plus, slight crest 40, turn 90 right plus, and don't cut, 30, Fast left, 60, flat right minus long, 20, easy left, straight 100, left max straight 80, narrows 10, fast left plus, 20 fast left minus, 20 medium left plus, 50, bumps maybe okay, 60, easy left plus, straight 60, K left, long, 30, medium right minus, Titans, 30, slow medium left, straight 40, K right minus times to dip, 20 flat left, to bumps, to slow K right, Titans keep right, 30, fast left, through bumps, 40, medium right, to medium left, plus, 50, flat left, to fast right in, 60 cut straight OK to crest and medium left and K left through dip 3 to medium right to medium left plus 60 flat left 70 bumpy to medium right minus bad bumps 10 slow K left 40 medium right tightens to medium left and bumps 30 turn K left plus 30 slow K right to K left, 40, right max, 50, fast right plus sand, 20, easy left, minus tight, long, to cut straight, bumpy, to easy left, tight, go, 80, Not worth. easy right, 40, easy left, and cut straight through bushes, to easy right, plus, 50, cut easy right, plus tree, 50, cut right through tree, to flat left, rock and straight, 60, to K left, wrong. 80, easy right minus in, 40, K right plus, 30, K left, plus, bumpy, 60 braking, flat right 20, K left, narrow.